to talk about Sherlock Holmes and pairing. It's a bit of a parallel between working with someone and learning from someone while pairing. Um, and I found it very interesting that Sherlock Holmes does that with Dr. Watson. This is me. Um, I'm a programmer. I'm um, also a trainer and a coach. I do also stuff like uh, pairing with people, programming with people, but I also pair on other stuff like uh, delivering trainings or facilitating uh, sessions. Um, now, I would like to ask you first. Um, do you think you pair sometimes? Yes? How do you pair? Or what is the, the, the way you pair with people? Communicating. Communicating. Okay. Communication. Discussing. Consulting. So discussing. Kind of prototyping without anything, just uh -huh. in words. Prototyping. Yes. And uh, something else. Uh, a little specific. I'm not a developer, an analyst. Yes, no, of course. I, I will coding talk about together is not uh, an option. No, I will talk about pairing in a lot of areas, not in programming. Okay. That's just one part of it. So I, I definitely agree. So do you, do other people from here pair? You think you pair? Yes, yeah? yes. <laughs> so you do in a way. How often do you think you, you, could, you pair with people? Every day. Every day. Okay. So it's every day. Okay. Someone else? Maybe someone working alone, I don't know. But the idea is to try to do it consciously, right? So to say, now I'm going to pair and to, to make some constraints and we'll see how. I'm gonna go to these two concepts <coughs> that come from um, pair programming, from uh, the, the concept of pair programming which was in a way invented by the XP community, the extreme programming community. And they, they started saying, saying that we should pair always. And in their uh, in their way of work is is like that. Everything we do, two programmers should develop software, and we change roles. And in a team, everyone should pair with everyone. In a way, um, and there there are these two roles. So the driver is the person that writes code, and the navigator is the person that sits near and observes and give suggestions. And this happens also when you discuss, when you consult, when you prototype, because uh, when you discuss, someone's listening and someone's talking, right? If you have a dialogue, if you're not, I don't know, yelling with someone. Um, when you consult with someone, you want to hear what the other people is, is saying. So this is per programming. But you consult on code because you write code and the other people should give their input, their feedback. Now, this is what the driver does. Always the driver takes the decisions. Um, but the decisions are made by consulting with the navigator. And the very uh, big difference between the driver and the navigator is that the the navigator will focus on long-term details, while the driver focuses on, on details now. So these details are like, how do I, how do I push these uh, uh, buttons? How do I create this class? How do I name this variable? The navigator will, will like to, sh to look uh, further away. What is very difficult when doing pair programming is verbalizing, talking, and typing. And this is a skill that often um, programmers need to learn because our brain does not allow 
this way of, in a way, multitasking. So you need to be very well, uh, to be very good at typing in order to understand <coughs> and to know what you're doing so you can talk about it. And I, I have worked with a couple of guys that were typing 200 words per minute and talking at the same time. And it was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing now? Whoa, stop. And after that, I understood what, how important it is. Now, the navigator, as I said, looks ahead for strategy. So when you're listening, you, you try to get the context. But in the same time, you recheck the facts of the, of the driver, because you want the driver to, uh, to be sure about uh, their decisions. Um, also, should ask meaningful questions. Why are you doing this? Are you sure it's a good thing? Did you think about this way? Because you have the long-term uh, view. Um, and everything is about verbalizing. But put, uh, asking questions isn't... Should, well, should the, the navigator should not ask questions that cross the driver's comfort zone. I mean, you could pair program with someone that's less experienced, and you should understand that. You shouldn't say, well, you don't know that, you're stupid. No, that's not the way. You should be very um, em empathic with uh, the other and understand the limit. And if you say, you see that you ask some questions, you, you should stop there. Now, going back to um, Holmes and Watson, they, they're in a train, they're pairing. They are discussing about the case. And look at, at how um, Holmes is taking action. So if you know Sherlock Holmes, he's always a man of action. And always uh, Dr. Watson is a man of, um, of navigation. He, he's the person that listens, uh, the person that understands Holmes, but doesn't take decisions that often. And Holmes is saying, well, Watson is saying about Holmes that he took his revolver, and that means that we might have some serious things to do this night. Another thing that Holmes is doing, if you know about Sherlock Holmes, he's a person that focuses a lot on data. He's a very, um, he's, he's a person that wants to do everything in a logical manner. And he says, if you do not have data, you cannot do anything. This is what a driver should do, but both a navigator. You should have facts. You should not have something that you feel you should do. You should some, have some real facts and you discuss them here, you consult, but then you take the decision of those data, on the, those data. But also data can be deceptive um, when you pair. And you need to understand what are the important data and what you need to leave out. And this is a lot about communication. Now look what Watson says when he he was a navigator. He says that his way of being a bit slow, asking questions, might have annoyed him, but was very useful for Holmes to flesh up the, uh, the intuitions that he had. Why? Because Holmes was saying, look, I, ha I, I have this idea. I think it's, it happened like this. And, and Always Watson was, yeah, but why? But maybe it wasn't like that. And this triggered to Holmes always a, a better way to explain, and it, this made him think more about the whole idea. And this is how the navigator should focus on, on asking the good questions, even if there are 
a bit annoying for the driver. Um, now, for the navigator, the navigator should remember what what are the facts that the driver uh, said, verbalized, and and the navigator should support the driver's decision because, as I said, the driver is the person that takes the decision. So even though I don't agree, I'm a navigator, I should um, respect the decision. And the next two things are very difficult. The navigator needs to see the options ahead. This is something Watson doesn't do that often. But when you are, especially when you're doing pair programming, you should do that. Because it's so difficult to understand what you're doing now and how, and how this small change will affect the whole system. So the navigator has this, this way of looking broader and not caring about the small details that happen now. And this is why when you have um, small changes, they might have implications in the system. Processing this data is very hard for a navigator. And this is why I will say, I will explain a bit later, why processing data is extremely hard for a navigator, uh, navigator and why being a navigator is extremely difficult. And it's probably more important than being a good driver. Now, this is what um, both Holmes and Watson are saying about learning. So Holmes is saying that education never ends, Watson. It's a series of learn lessons with the greatest for the last. And Watson says, I have not lived for years with Sherlock Holmes for nothing, because he learned a lot from him, just by, by uh, being his parent. So this is what working together means, closely, always. Now, getting a bit out of this um, paradigm of Holmes and Watson, Pairing is like this. You either drive or navigate. You should observe well, both when you're driving or navigating. You should always verbalize what you're doing. The suggestions should be meaningful and should be very uh, well expressed. Being a navigator is extremely hard because you need to look at the broader context and each small change might trigger some, some uh, changes that are very hard to understand for the big system. And pairing is learning. This is what I found by myself. You can always learn, even though you are extremely experienced, you can always learn for, from someone that's not at all experienced. Why? Because often those people have the beginner's mind to ask maybe stupid questions, but they aren't that stupid, in fact. They're very intelligent questions. Now, these are some ideas for Perry. So who, who is the programmer here? OK. Have you ever done pair programming? Yes? Yes? Have you ever paired with testers? No? You should do that. It's very useful to pair with testers. They have this way of, um, of showing you how, how your, your idea is wrong, of, of uh, analyzing the things that you're doing in, in a destructive, positive way. <laughs> because the reason a, a tester is a good tester is that they know how to destroy the system. And if you know how to destroy the system um, in the beginning, then the system will be stronger in the end. So you don't need to wait until the end when the, the system, system will be tested, right? So fast feedback, immediate feedback from the testers. So you should try to pair up with the testers. You should do that with analysts as well. You should do that with business people, with stakeholders. And what will happen if you do that 
you will need to write code in the domain language because you will need to write code in a way that analysts will understand that business people will understand because as I say as a programmer good code reads like prose it's like an article this is how a class should be it should be like an article with paragraphs using the name that everyone understands from this and uh, often if you pair with a, a business person or a product owner or whatever they will tell you I don't understand this oh sorry I forgot to put a meaningful name here so the code becomes better or you write a domain name and he says no no that's not a good name that's, that's some, uh, something else so it's the same thing, fast feedback, immediate feedback. And you know, at the beginning of, of, of this uh, process. Now, per facilitation, have you facilitated with anyone else ever? Like, um, facilitation means, well, I'm from a lot, I'm doing a lot of things with Agile. This is a very common term in Agile, and it means doing the least you uh, the least you can to give people the way the the place to engage and to learn, like doing a workshop in a way that's facilitation, not teaching them but just showing them how to do or some other formats so just making sure that everyone has uh, all the things they need in order to perform an activity like if we have here uh, a meeting if I'd be the facilitator of a meeting I would need to find a room I would need to make sure that it's occupied for the time box I need to make the agenda and I need to make sure that we respect the agenda and we will keep everything in this time box. This would be my role as a uh, facilitator. But it's often very useful to facilitate someone else. Because when you start facilitating with someone else, that person will tell you, hey, let's do it like this, let's try it like this. And then you facilitate with someone else and, and something like this happens again. So learning grows in your organization and more people um, learn about other ways of facilitating. Now, fair talking. This is something that's very interesting that you could do at conferences, like here. So why just one person talking? You could have two people or three people talking. I've seen that happening. And it's very interesting because it has some some meaningful uh, and some positive uh, results in the end. Pair writing, have you wrote books or stuff like that? Articles, blog posts, okay? Some of them, yeah, okay. Well, try writing with someone else and use this concept of collective text ownership. Like, it's not my text or your text, it's our text. We could modify as we want together because we said it's ours. And in the end, we'll trust each other that we'll do only good modifications. If not, maybe we have a source control to get back to <laughs> modifications. Now, this is from a code retreat I facilitated last uh, Saturday in Bucharest. Um, this is how pair programming looks like. So you have these, um, these two persons typing together, talking together on some problem, okay? If you're pair, program, pro pair programming, you should do it anyway. There are some ideas that you should do pair programming always. I don't agree with that. I think it should be done with reason, with care, and it ha must have a purpose. So 
let's solve this problem for two hours now. But you can do it somewhere else. Like I'm, um, I'm organizing uh, a thing called Code and Beer in Bucharest. Every two weeks, we gather in a pub and we write code. So you can do that, and you will meet people that you don't know. In they will have problems that you don't know how to solve, but you will struggle there to pair with them and to learn stuff. Okay, so it's very useful to get a bit out of the office space to pair because you'll meet a lot of new challenges. Now in uh, pair, good pair programming, the uh, roles, so driver navigator roles, and the keyboard changes very often. Ideally, once every two, three, five minutes. And it's like a, a ping pong. I'm writing now, you're writing now, and this is how learning starts. When someone become, who was a driver five minutes ago, now is a navigator, and the other way around. Um, from some studies, the outcomes are a lot of learning, so we learn better the product and the, um, the, do the domain of the problem, and we learn, uh, we have a shared knowledge of what we've done in the code as well. So it's not learning just about the domain, it's learning about the code. Because it won't be like, I know this piece of code, and I know this piece of code, it will be probably we know these, and you know these, not that well, but at least I know how to dive in and find more. So it's, it's very useful to learn it in this way. And in this way, you'll have good products, better products, because if everyone knows the code base, it will be easier for you to change the, the, the code. Now, I, I said here that it's the fastest feedback cycle in Agile. I don't know, who knows about the Agile feedback cycles? Okay? So, it's like seconds, right? You have something, if you're doing something like Scrum, probably you'll have something like a feedback cycle of uh, seconds in pair programming, feedback cycles every day with a daily meeting, uh, weekly, probably, or once every two weeks, you'll have feedback cycle with a, a product owner. You'll have uh, each day or each night a feedback cycle from automatic tests. But this is the, the first feedback cycle. And it can be cheap, very difficult. Because you can work with a person that doesn't know you, and it's a bit awkward in the beginning. It's like, what am I going to do now? What if I'm typing something wrong and what is this person going to say about me? Am I good enough? Yes, you are. Of course you are. So you should get a bit out of your comfort zone and you'll see that it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Now, I'm going to tell a story about uh, this guy, Ron Jeffries. Um, He's very well known about having very uh, tough opinions about quality code. He's always arguing about what's good code and what's not. And he is a very regular uh, goer, yeah, goer to some user groups in different languages, and specifically on Agile. And he was once at the code retreat, and he's pairing with someone. And usually what, ha what was happening is that he was like, what are you doing? No, don't do that, you stupid. No, it was quiet, no, no one was hearing anything. And everyone was like, oh, what happened to Ron? Is he in the room or something? Uh, and they, they saw that he was just asking questions. And he was asking the good questions to let the driver, who is very novice, uh, to let the driver understand the good path. Because he understood so well where the, the code was going, 
He just needed to ask the good questions. And this is the very difficult part of being a good navigator. Ask the good questions in order to determine the driver to take the good path. So you do not need to, to um, convince the driver. You just need to ask the good questions that would trigger his own logic to show that that's a good part. And this is why I say that being a very good navigator is extremely difficult. Now, again on pair facilitation. Um, I saw there aren't a lot of people doing facilitation here, but you should try to do this. Anywhere. Just ask someone, and you learn a lot from them. Um, the main outcome probably is that you learn more about how to simplify and clarify your explanation, especially when uh, facilitating uh, workshops or stuff like that. So you'll find more about yourself. Um, pair talking is very useful when because you have fast feedback on content. So you don't need like a group of people reading your book you will have a writer that will write with you and will help you learn about what's good about the book or not. Um, so this is per writer. And it's usually a very fun experience. Now, about pairing. Would you have other ideas to pair, now that I explained a bit the concept? What would you do, let's say, well, not tomorrow, but on Monday. <coughs> Who could you drag from your company to say, hey, let's do this together? <coughs> pairing good testers. Sorry? Pairing good testers. So Everyone pairing good like. testers. Okay, that's a good one. <coughs> Something else. Ruling the country. Sorry? Ruling the country. Ruling the country. Like Medvedev and Putin. Okay, Medvedev and Putin, that's good. <laughs> Who do you want to be, Medvedev or Putin? <laughs> well, it's better to be Putin. Okay, so you want to be Putin. You feel that he has more power than Medvedev, right? <laughs> okay. But now seriously, how would you do this in your company? Who could you pair with? As a matter of fact, I am quite frequently pairing with business in analysis process to make not I am trying to interview them, but we are trying together with one person, means we are paired, make yeah. description for others, not he and me, who against who, but we are together making. Mm -hmm. In describe something, I mask something, and we are changing the content. And I am doing it really often. Yeah. yeah, that's good. But then, you know, you're doing this, you're writing for someone, but then you should probably pair with that someone that you're writing for as well. Uh, yes, this, is, uh, this pair is changing quite frequently, sometimes five times a day. It's okay. different pair, okay, it's done, it's next now. Excellent. Something else. Would a CEO pair with a programmer? Well, he could, but I think that's a bit of strange resistance of. But you could ask about that. It's it's never difficult to just ask a question. Hey, pair with me. Let's do this together. Just because I know you have the, the knowledge and the answers about this. So, and I would ask you this just to get a bit of commitment from you. When would you want to start pairing? 
because it's such a learning experience in my view that you should not miss it besides having good products and good, good results that will make you happier you will learn a lot so again this is me this is what some of the things that I do uh, this is where I work at Mosaic Works I will put the slides on the uh, slide share and I'll put the link on, on Twitter as well with the hashtag if you have any questions on that, what I've said until now. Uh, when would you avoid pairing? Um, there are some uh, times when you don't have really, you don't have the time to do it. You won't do a very good job, but you need to do it faster. Uh, there are some other constraints like people that really don't uh, care about each other and they will, it will be a mess if they pair. Um, and generally when you lose time, mm -hmm. bec because pairing takes a bit longer but the, uh, the outcome is better. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that time, it's a constraint for you, it's not that. When you say an outcome, you mean clean code, better code? Yeah, certainly. It's for a book, is is a better book. For for code, is cleaner code book, or better design? But I think this is this is a difference. The book, and what what you've written, this is actually the thing which the reader reads. Yes. And in the code, the user doesn't see your code. No, but other programmers will read the code often. So code is more often <laughs> read than written. Yes, so if you write well, the next programmer that would read it would need less time to read it well, fast, to understand it. Sometimes the next programmer is you, six months later. Yes. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. So it's the same thing, the product. That's, that's the product of the a programmer, the code. And by the way, code could be more in accordance with business needs. Yeah. Because definitely. one programmer frequently misses some point why this code is needed. Per cover is better. Okay. So last question. Oh no. Okay. Do you have any other question? Then thank you very much.